Alright, so yesterday I went on Gizmodo and read this really interesting article about liquid metal and how Apple is uh, buying exclusive rights to use it in its future products and no one really knows what they're going to use it for but it's there's a lot of speculation about it. So I thought that I had a perfect comparison because here I have the iPod Nano and the Samsung E200. And this Nano is the second gen. It's from, it came out in September 2006. And then there's the Samsung E200 which made by SanDisk and it came out in, in January 2006. So as you all know the second gen Nano it's basically the mini design but thinner and flash memory and all that but it's anodized aluminum with a hollow inside so you can put the components inside and yeah Samsung E200 if you look on back it's liquid metal this stuff if you look at it, it's a bit more yellowish tan grunt brown I don't know it's uh, well anyway it's it's yeah it's liquid metal and then from the press release it says it's uh, yeah this is press release uh, from Sandus uh, January 5th 2006 it's distinctive high strength and lightweight back cover is made with an advanced titanium alloy from liquid metal technologies that is stronger than steel and highly resistant to scratches and wear alright so that's that oh yeah and then I'm gonna do some tests on these by disassembling them and taking just the metal parts that I need Alright, problem. So it turns out the scroll wheel, you can't really take it off, it's glued onto the inside of the little uh, aluminum tube. And same with the headphone jack. So I guess I have to test it like that. And this thing too. It's alright. Okay. Now here's where the scene stuff, so much easier. No need for all of this. Just take a Phillips head. They cut the screws. And then peel it apart. There we go. A chunk of solid liquid metal. And a anodized aluminum tube from that iPod. Alright, I'm cool. Alright, so we're ready to do the drop test from about six feet. Like right above my head. I'm going to do a second test this time from 5 feet, I think. Well, from the 5 foot drop test, some more of the little dings on the side of the iPod Nano. A little bit on the corner. And the front corner. And the Sansa with the liquid metal. There's a little bit more of uh, little some more dimples like all along the edges. It's actually less obvious than on the anodized aluminum I find nano. They're smaller, more rounded. Alright, test number two. I marked an X on each of the players. You can see where there's not much 
stuff in front there's X and then I'm gonna try to nail a nail through here sounds like a bad idea but um, yeah it's for the purpose of science I'm gonna start on the nano hope it's not gonna go the whole way through I'm gonna give it uh, three knocks what are they called? three hammers one Okay, that, that doesn't seem like it worked out that one. One, two, three. Alright. I guess I'll have to do six this time. One, two, three. And then one, two, three. Right. So again, it seems like the nano had a slightly worse of a little dimp work there. For a third test, I'm just gonna knock a hammer right on the thing and see if it makes like a circle mark or something, or like just a big dip. So I don't know. I honestly can't think of any more tests. So where's the X? There's the X. One, two, three. Fail. <laughs> One, two, three. Nope. Didn't do anything. Alright, third test, I'm gonna emulate like what, uh, oops, what light, no, no, liquid metal did on uh, their own demonstration thing with the iron balls, marbles dropping out of these things. Well, I don't have balls or marbles. I don't have marbles. No, this isn't working. I don't have steel marbles right now. If it was in the garage, I found some iron nuts or steel nuts or whatever they are. And I'm going to drop them from same height and hopefully they actually land on this thing. Two out of three wins, I guess, because you can't always make them right. Fail. They didn't even go on this thing. Fail. Okay, I guess they don't bounce at all. Okay, that's a failed test.